Vehicle now on internal power. We have auto sequence start. That first umbilical tower separating from the booster. There's one more to go that will uh, separate shortly. Under 30 seconds. Auto sequence initiated. We have auto sequence start. Oxygen. Be ready to land. The engine's igniting, the launch command issued. Again, the engines will fire, ramping up towards flight speed. And liftoff. Peggy Whitson, Oleg Novitsky, and Tomas Pesquet rocketing towards the International Space Station. The rocket lighting up the night sky there in Baikonur. All initial performance calls indicate everything nominal or normal. First stage delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust through those four boosters in the single core engine. First stage measuring 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter. It's going to burn liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of the flight. Everything continuing to look steady, straight as an arrow for the Soyuz as it continues to rocket off again. Launched right on time at 2.20 p.m. Central, 3.20 p.m. Eastern. Everything's fine on board. Spherical tank pressure is nominal. We got me. Over 70 seconds, one minute, 10 seconds into the flight velocity of the Soyuz now over 1,100 miles per hour. 80 seconds into flight. Control, motion control systems are working nominally. Everything's fine on board. We copy. The rest of the second stage are working nominally. Performance calls with the booster continuing to look great. So he's continuing to fly straight and true. And there you see the four strap ons breaking away in the night sky there. Uh, the first four stage, uh, the first stage boosters being jettisoned. Copy. Their job complete, they drop away at an altitude of about 28 statute miles. So he's traveling at over 3,300 miles per hour. Now powered by the second stage. Structure and the engines are nominal. The crew is feeling fine. We copy you. We see you guys and we confirm. Yes, Fearing jettisoning. Confirmed. Copy. And so at this point, the launch shroud has been jettisoned. The Soyuz now exposed to the air and soon to space. The rocket in an altitude about 48 miles high. See you on the, um, on the second video camera and the descent. Getting a wave there from NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson making her third journey to the International Space Station. You five by five. Copy. Seated just next to Russian cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky. At this point, the Soyuz traveling at a speed of about 4,700 miles an hour. The crew is feeling fine. We copy. So the second stage continuing to burn. Uh, that core stage that also flies during the uh, the first stage, performing as expected. That core stage, 56 feet in length, 13 and a half feet in diameter, has a single engine with four fuel chambers and is uh, providing between 178,000 and 222,000 pounds of thrust, depending on the altitude, uh, for its three minutes and 28 seconds of operation. It will continue to burn until the four minute, 43 second mark to when the Soyuz uses what's known as a hot stage technique. And that's the third stage will ignite while the second's still burning. 
This is why the Soyuz has that small open grading area between the second and the third stages. The second stage performing flawlessly so far. We are four minutes and 30 seconds since launch. Everything looking good so far. Getting confirmation the second stage has dropped away, separating at an altitude of about 105 miles. Soyuz now being propelled by the single engine of the third stage, providing 67,000 pounds of thrust, going to burn, burn for the next four minutes and two seconds. And again, this is the third and final stage. It's going to continue burning until about eight minutes and 45 seconds since liftoff, at which point the Soyuz will separate and be in its preliminary orbit. seconds into flight. All motion control systems are nominal. Everything's fine on board. Bobby. Another look inside the capsule. Again, Oleg Novitsky in the center seat. Uh, Thomas Pesquet, the European astronaut, at the top of your screen. This Pesquet's first flight, the second Soyuz ride uphill for Oleg Novitsky. Everything continuing to go smoothly with the launch, which rocketed off on, on time at 2.20 p.m. Central Time. Six minutes, 30 seconds since liftoff. So over seven and a half minutes of flight at this point, the Soyuz traveling at a velocity of almost 13,500 miles an hour. So there's just a little under a minute left in powered flight. Once the third stage delivers the Soyuz to orbit and the module separated, those pre-programmed commands will be executed, preparing the Soyuz for orbital operations. Uh, all of these allowing the Soyuz systems to be automatically activated by on onboard computers at precise times stored inside. And some of those uh, maneuvers will include deploying, again, those uh, critical navigation antennas and the solar arrays that will power batteries providing electricity to the various Soyuz systems. Twenty seconds till contact separation. Affirmative. And seeing the telltale jolt there, that means the third stage has cut off and separated. Separation constant. Contact. Con the confirmation coming from the folks in uh, Mission Control Moscow, third stage has separated successfully that single liquid-fueled engine shutting down and dropping it away at an altitude of about 125 statute miles.
And already getting confirmation from the visiting vehicle officer here in Houston. All of the different uh, communication and navigation antennas have deployed along with those two solar arrays. So we have confirmation of spacecraft separation deployment. The Soyuz now orbiting at an altitude of about 143 by 118 miles. And that orbit is going to be raised systematically over the next two days as they chase down the International Space Station. Control of the spacecraft from here on out will be overseen by the Russian Mission Control Center just outside of Moscow. But for now, safely in orbit, uh, NASA's Peggy Whitson, ESA's Toma Pesquet, and Roscosmos's Oleg Novitsky following a successful and a flawless launch in the early morning sky over Baikonur. So everything going very well with this Soyuz MS-03 vehicle so far vehicle in orbit, all of the antennas and the solar arrays deployed, and the chase down of the International Space Station has now begun. R-17 command has been sent. Yes. And three and a half hours into today's flight, Soyuz is going to automatically execute the first of three planned orbital adjustment burns as they fine-tune their path to the International Space Station. And then during the next two days, they will have two opportunities to test some of the systems on board the MS. Uh, this is the third time the vehicle's flown and uh, the third round of tests during a two-day rendezvous. Uh, after the orbital insertion, previous versions of the Soyuz traditionally maneuvered using uh, to its desired orbital attitude uh, by using infrared sensors that actually look for the Earth's horizon. Um, right now, this view that you're seeing actually getting telemetry down from the Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, the advanced computer and the software of the new Soyuz MS series, now powerful enough to remember the last known valid altitude measured at the point of main engine cutoff, and is going to be able to calculate the current attitude by using gyros and accelerometers to measure how the spacecraft has moved since then. Technique is going to be tested by the Soyuz onboard systems by maneuvering the vehicle to a desired attitude more quickly without using that horizon sensor and then verifying how well it worked. Uh, the new Soyuz also includes a redesigned uh, combined propulsion system to provide additional redundancy and then again just some more data on the effectiveness of the new thruster configuration. Uh, the spacecraft will perform a maneuver using only a small subset of the thrusters on the mid-ring between the descent module and the instrumentation propulsion module. Crew members and ground controllers are going to monitor both of these tests. And then additionally, a new tracking station near the eastern Russian town of, of Uglogorsk, uh, close to the new launch complex called Vostochny, will be used for uh, S-band telemetry and commanding, uh, the same band that we use for commanding on the International Space Station to test the ground station and the network. And then if all goes well, future Soyuz missions may be able to revert back to that four-orbit single-day rendezvous with the space station instead of the two-day one that Peggy Whitson and her crewmates are on right now. God, Peggy, we do not read you. Kazbeki, how do you read us? Kazbeki, this is Moscow. How do you read us? <laughs> 